gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was the inspiration for Johnny Fontaine in The Godfather. Say, did you know that about 150 years or so ago, the United States actually fought a civil war? <laughs> no fooling. Well, it's not like they teach that stuff in school. Anyway, I want to tell you about a game that is all about the American Civil War, and it is called A House Divided from Mayfair Games. Divided from Mayfair Games, one player will take on the role of the Union, while the other player will take on the role of the Confederacy. North and South, Blue and Gray, Laurel and Hardy. Anyway, how the game plays out is that you are going to um, try to occupy various cities throughout the board. Now what's going to happen is uh, you each have a number of units. You have very basic units, militia, that you start the game out with, but eventually they can be promoted to kind of a, a veteran status or crack status. This gives them more combat power and other advantages. The game plays out in a series of turns. Now, you each start the game with a number of cities, and each city that you hold has a certain kind of logistical uh, ability, a logistical point value that uh, essentially takes care of your armies, that supports your armies. Now, the game plays out from June of 1861 to, I believe, June of 1865, the four years, roughly, of the American Civil War. <clears throat> now, on your turn, what you are going to do is uh, roll a dice. Now, if you roll a one or a two, you're always going to get at least two what are called marches. But if you roll a three, four, five, or a six on a d6, you'll get that number of marches. You're always guaranteed at least two, but you may get more. Now what these marches are is that allows you to move uh, stacked units in a specific city to another adjacent city. Uh, adjacent, if it's usually if it's infantry, there's also rail lines which could let you move up to two. Uh, cavalry can move up to two. Uh, you can also move not just along uh, the regular roads and the railroads, you can also move along rivers. They allow you to move as well. And you can move into different cities uh, provided you control them if, if you're moving by rail. Uh, you can't rail into an attack that is a city held by uh, your enemy. So you have to march into a uh, adjacent city if you want to attack it. So this leads to combat. In combat, what you do is you remove all of the units that are participating in combat on both sides, kind of off the board, and you're going to have just kind of a die roll-off. Now, each unit you have, again, has a combat value, a 1, 2, or a 3. Now, the defender gets to fire first, and you pick which unit each of your units is going to fire at, and then you roll the die. Uh, a hit is any number that is equal to or less than the combat value of that unit. <clears throat> so, for instance, if you have a crack unit that's rolling a 3, uh, you would hit on a 1, 2, or 3. Now, if you score a hit, that unit is going to be flipped over to its damaged side, and then if it's hit again, it will be removed from uh, play. There are options to retreat and to kind of bring in reinforcements from adjacent uh, cities, but essentially the game plays out, the battle plays out, until one side or the other has lost. Um, the winning side then takes control of that particular city. And controlling those cities is important because that's going to give you more uh, power, more units uh, to field later on in the game. You're always kind of watching what kind of logistical support you have with those cities versus how many units you can field. It's a very, very important part of the game. Now, after battle, you can promote units. Essentially, what you do is you can pick a unit that served in that battle and survived that battle, and you can promote it you know, from a militia to a veteran unit or a veteran unit to a crack unit. So your, your units, they learn, they gain experience, uh, and, and they become stronger over time. Now also, too, with your march orders, you can also entrench, and some of the crack units have kind of an entrenchment uh, on there as well. And what that is is a negative one. Essentially, it's a negative one to your enemy's die rolls against that unit. So that's another way you can kind of modify the dice rolls a little bit. So after movement, combat, and 
promotion, you can recruit more units. You look on the board and you see that if you can support more armies. And if you can, you can go ahead and put more armies out on the board. You can place them in any of those strategic cities uh, that allow you to place them there. They're marked on the board. Then, of course, you can continue the fight on your opponent's turn. Now, victory is different for the both sides. Now, the Union Army, in order to win, he can only win one way. The Union player has to occupy the seven uh, Confederate cities that are number two or three. They have to occupy all seven of those in order to win. The Confederate player can win in a number of ways. For instance, if the Confederate player takes Washington, D.C., he wins immediately. If ever the Confederate player can support more armies than the Northern player, the Confederate player wins. And if ever the Confederate player can survive... The total turns from June 61 to June 65, they win as well. So there's some variation. There's some margin for error with the Confederates there. So first of all, a couple things about House Divided. Uh, when we played it, we uh, the games we played, we just played the base rules. There's a lot of optional rules and a lot of different uh, things you can do. And we didn't really get into those. I'd like to in the future. They look uh, a lot of fun. But we just played the base game because, frankly, we thought that sounded pretty fun. This is a basic war game. It's a basic area control game. It's a basic game of um, you know trying to maneuver your armies to to take those areas you need, while at the same time trying to defend your homeland against the invasions of your enemy. Now, this can be a fairly long game. This could be a two to three hour game, but it's not terribly complex. At least the base game is not really that complex. It is a very straightforward game. It's a very easy game to learn. It's a very easy game to play, but it is incredibly complex and it gives you a ton of strategic decisions throughout the game. So if you're if you're one of those people that likes war games that are kind of lighter light to medium war games but you don't like this huge complexity that a lot of war games has, this is something you're going to want to look at because this I think fits that niche really well. It's uh, you know a, a fun strategic game without being too heavy and I and I and I really get a kick out of it. One of the kind of things that, that really makes this interesting, too, is that idea of you need to watch your um, army size, and you need to constantly be counting up your cities to make sure it, you're in compliance with that. Now, i got to admit, sometimes that gets a little frustrating. Every turn, you're, you're, you're counting up all your cities. It can, be, it can get to be a bit much, and it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little fiddly that way, and that was probably my biggest drawback for A House Divided. But frankly, it's kind of a minor drawback because I really, really like this highly strategic game that is, again, easy to play and, uh, and and fun to play. I really liked it. I like the Civil War theme. I like the history it puts out there. And I just like the gameplay. This is a good game. If you like light war games, like the medium war games, you are definitely going to want to check out A House Divided. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for A House Divided is uh, buy it. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. My name is Cody. Uh, please, 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 why don't you leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on Facebook, uh, uh, on uh, our website, thediscriminatinggamer.com. And please, please, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And you know what? We denounce secession. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going. People don't give Barry Manilow enough credit!